Good morning everybody, welcome back to another episode. You better believe it, we are back on the tools. We've got lots of things that we need to get done around the house today. We've also got, if you can see behind me, Mr. Andy T in the building, our local B resident as well. He's just fitting a new shelf over the underfloor heating manifold in the cupboard. I'll show you actually. Take a spin around. Put all the floor protection down. And right here, the operation has begun. So this is actually gonna be a removable panel so we can still access all of the running gear for the manifolds. Should anything go wrong, and he's just started to wrap a skirting around the front of it just to make it a little bit more decorative. And uh, currently outside, as you can hear, just cutting the lid for that, which means that we're gonna be able to have this area looking a little bit tidier. Just excuse the current state of it, Lydia needs to come. And have a little organize in here, but this is where we store all of our bed linen, towels, some sort of like lotions, kitchen rolls, and stuff like that, so yeah. I guess refills all very nicely labelled. Today, keep the noise down, mate. I'm trying to film. Yeah, I'm keeping everybody awake. Right <laughs> so, I have a new trug to build. Lydia had the herb trug sent to her probably about two or three weeks ago, and she fell in love with it. And as she continues her venture to growing homegrown vegetables, herbs, you name it. She's decided to invest in the veg truck. So she purchased this, I think last week, and it arrived yesterday. So I'm gonna get busy building that with you guys now. And it looks a little bit bigger than the other one. Um, also looks a bit lower as well. See it in the picture there. Today is one of the hottest days of the week. We're coming into a little bit of a heat wave this weekend. I actually mentioned in my last vlog that it was gonna be like 28 degrees. We're actually looking at more towards the 30, 31, 32 degrees Celsius, which is incredible. All very excited for it coming into the weekend. Good weather calls for outside work, so I'm gonna get busy doing that. And uh, I'm also gonna try and collar Andy actually at some point because with his B experience, I do wanna just ask a few questions about the location, the setup. And we're also gonna be talking a little bit about the plants that we're gonna be putting in around so the bees, when they do arrive, have some good produce to feed off of because we need to make sure that their nectar is prime. He actually mentioned that rapeseed nectar isn't the best and they can travel up to like three miles to go and collect. So we wanna make sure that they've got sufficient, good quality uh, produce here uh, to try to limit the amount of bad produce that they might go and uh, collect from in the local area. So yeah, we're gonna have a little chat about that as well, which means more lavender and all that good stuff. with big vegetables, big aubergines and stuff, you'd know that they're quite big. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> Little carrot. So there she is in all her glory. So Lydia wanted to get this prior to having her actual vegetable garden because that's gonna be a little bit of a wait. And what a lovely idea for somebody that 
maybe slightly more restricted on garden space or they just don't fancy having raised beds in their gardens. This is a great alternative. It's nicely raised, so you're gonna be able to access it comfortably. You can stick it outside the back of your kitchen window so you can get to your veg quickly. Because something that we're both finding, Lids, with the herbs, is if they're not close, you don't use them as much. Well, we're gonna have ones that we keep closer and then yeah. there'll be other ones that we will have over there as well. But I found the iron brackets that For can sit under the window. The windows, yeah. So you'll, you'll have to look at them and see what size you think we'll need. Yeah, for the chives and stuff that yeah, I use every day. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this is a great little um, product, isn't it? It's gonna work well. We could have it as a little pool, little jacuzzi. Yeah. Tub. Yeah, when, like we, a, um, when we're finished with it, we don't need any machine because I'll just create bubbles myself. <laughs> so true. Lydia has requested that we stick a coat of paint on this to match the rest of the uh, house. So yeah, we're gonna give this a lick of paint. Oh no, we might lose the veg truck on this one. Yeah, we will because it's not engraved. Maybe I'll speak to Andy the carpenter to see if he can engrave it for us. Happy with that then? Oh, it looks amazing much tidier yeah the only thing is, is does the toilet basket the toilet roll basket fit in there still do the test do the toilet roll test Hello. oh wastage this is what covid does to you <laughs> yeah uh doesn't fit yeah it does fit doesn't yeah. fit all the way down no we can put it in there like that and put other things in yeah there. I could or make it. I could make it fit. I reckon though. It looked like it's. It no, it definitely won't sit up there. Yeah. Yeah, but it just protrudes a lot, doesn't it? No, well, yeah, but anyway, it, it it does fit. It does fit on the ground, yeah. Yeah. And we can stock other things behind that in in the back. Oh, it's because it gets bigger at at some points. You can have a play there. Cool. Just put a it looks it great though, doesn't it? Yeah, Happy. it looks it's, it's all It's all removable as well, so yeah. you can lift the lid off, take the base out. Oh, brilliant. So you can access everything, so yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Right, so we've made our way outside. As you can see, we've got the truck next to the shed ready to have its first coat of paint. We're going to be going with Farrow and Ball Pigeon. First things first, when we're going to be decorating anything, protect your floor. I've put some floor protection down to make sure that I don't get any paint on the gravel because I've done that once before and it took a whole day to get it out. Then secondly, I'm gonna prep my surface. So if you need to do any sanding, make sure that all the screw heads and everything are covered. I'm not gonna be using any wood filler, but obviously this is when you would put wood filler over the screws, sand that down to create a nice finish and then make sure your surface is prepped, ready to go. I'm then gonna mix up my paint using a stick to make sure that any of the paint that's separated is all mixed back up together again. Pour it into my tub and then get busy rolling this out and getting a first coat on it. Some people may suggest to use a primer or a zinza or something like that. This wood that's currently on the veg truck is actually already treated so I'm just going to go straight onto it and uh, it is only a vegetable truck at the end of the day. It'll be fine. It's going to live outside, it's going to get weathered. So there's an old saying, they say if you can piss you can paint. Uh, I don't quite quite uh, agree with that. I do think that there is an art to decorate in. Don't get me wrong, any, everybody's capable of sticking a lick of paint on the walls, tidying it up. But there is a difference between doing the job properly, using the wrong products and doing the wrong prep work. Um, so that is why we value Mr. Kenny Ken so much. As you know, he's always here decorating and I've learned lots from him, but this particular little task here, I'm gonna just get cracking on with it myself.
image for you. Image. So Lydia is putting the Queen of Sweden. Queen of Sweden rose. And I'm gonna pull you over here and we're gonna get back to painting. Is that your new cat scooper? Cat, cat pooper scoop. Looks like a cat pooper scoop. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do this though. What's that? Fill this in around the edges because this is quite tight. As long as the roots of the rose aren't showing, it, the well, they plant. Are showing. You shouldn't show the roots really, it doesn't look That's like. That's what I'm saying, but how do I get this soil in? Like you're doing it, it's great. Perfect. So this is the rose from Chalk Pink Linen? Yeah. Lovely. The Queen of Sweden. The old Queen of Sweden protecting the rear entrance. Yeah. I really like the uh, pot. You really like it? Yeah. Uh, should I order some more? Well. Before they sell out? Yeah. Should I order two more? Yeah, okay. Because I do like them. Yeah. I think they're cool. And they're designed for outdoors? Yeah. They, say, they actually say that they get better with age, age outside. So they rust up? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, order two more. I need another scoop or two. No, because I haven't done this side. And then I'd probably get this little bit of bark that was in the pot originally and just put that on the top yeah. of mulch. Did you put the seeds in, the feeder? No, that goes around the top. Well, so. I'd put it in now. So the whole reason why we're sticking this here primarily is because we're covering up this electrical box out the back of the door. One of Mrs. Millen Gordon's designs. What? To put the... Yeah. In front like of that. the electrical point. Electrical point. Um, you might have to open this for me. Okay, you hold. Maybe paint this bit, babe. I've got to paint the inside still, I've not finished. Not the inside of the thing, but I meant like the inside of the... Paint. Yeah, the top rim. The top rim. You don't yeah. need to see the, the inside bit. Yep, Looks okay. great though, Lydia's has just finished planting the rose. Little look. spider's already made it its home. It's gonna look nice, so as you can see. And make sure you let them know that we did put a hole in the bottom. Yeah, I think I filmed me doing it. Yeah, because people are like, oh, I put a hole in the bottom. And I also raised the pot up to allow the drainage. We're getting on top of our gardening skills slowly, aren't we? Yeah. As soon as you see any water running out the bottom, that's enough. They like a little bit of water, you know? I've not seen anything coming out the bottom. Yeah, I can see it. No, that's just because uh, I pulled it down the side by accident. That's one whole can. Have you deheaded that? Doesn't need it, or one? It's only got one, so no. But I've, that's the second, I put one and a half cans in there. Wow. And it's not coming they out. They just say when you first plant anything, give it a good, good water in. Is that in. enough or should I give it more? Oh, it's not going to die, babe, if you've given it two buckets full of water, is it? but I'm sure you'd be fine. I'm sure if you did half another one, you'll probably be enough. The veg truck is ready for its soil. So at the moment you can see that the insert is hanging over the edge. That won't stay like that. We'll take that in and staple it to the inside of the truck. So you end up just seeing wood and soil and obviously your produce. So it's not gonna be looking like this. It'll be inside, but I've just wrapped it over for now. So the truck's ready, but we're just about to take our beehive specialist, Mr. Andy T. And we're gonna go and check out the garden and decide where we wanna stick the new hive when we get it. And then what I said to Lids is we'll probably come to through here. This is all to be decided. And then we'd lit back on ourselves. So it becomes a bit of a path. What are you doing here? She's found us. This is where the bees are gonna live. You can't come here. So. So Andy, can you tell us what the um, information about the direction of the hive? Generally speaking, they're meant to face southeast. That's right. In dappled sunlight. In dappled sunlight. Yeah. 
But this is amazing. I mean, they've got forests that they can go mad on. Yeah. And loads of crop around. So, our house is through there. And what we always intended to create a nice little walkway through the woodland so we could come and enjoy the wildflower throughout the seasons. And this spot right here becomes the perfect place for them to be distanced far enough away from where we're living and anything that might upset them over by the house, but close enough for us to access. It also gives them the dappled light so they get protection from the wind and the elements. Uh, they also have got the natural woodland that they can enjoy and they've also got access straight out of there into the fields where they'll be able to collect a lot of their nectar so there seems to be a good spot and you'll have your pond once the pond's in they've yeah. got a water source as well haven't they yeah which will be over us by us and they're gonna love it it's prime there's already a bee over there <laughs> it's probably not a bee it's probably a wasp you're trying to mark your territory before they arrive let them know who's boss Who's Queenie? She's jokes. So she'll be going from plant to plant, stocking up and then fly back, drop it off and then come back out again? Yeah, so they've got a two bellies. Yeah. So they've got a nectar, I think it's a nectar sack they call it. Yeah. And when the nectar sack's full, she'll fly back. Do they collect it on their feet as well, you see? No, pollen. They collect the pollen on their feet. Right. Nectar inside their nectar sack. Wow. The pollen you usually see is two little yellow balls yeah. on the ends of their legs. But I don't know whether they collect it at the same time. I don't know whether they'll specifically go out for just honey or just pollen or whether they do both in the same trip. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Someone will be able to tell you though. They're small, aren't they? Yeah. The queens are not much wider. They're longer. No, no. And they're also lighter, aren't they? Mm. They're quite tricky to spot sometimes. So there we have it. We have just stapled down the lining in the veg trug. So this is how it will look with the soil. We're ready to rock and roll. It's a little break from being outside. I actually feel so tired just from being out in the sun all day. But I thought I'd quickly bring you inside, show you what Andy's been working on in the house. He does make one hell of a tradesman, I must say. If we just flip around into this room. so. This is the cupboard that I showed you earlier. That in front of you is the cork that I'm going to use just to cork around the tops and uh, the sides of the unit. This is because we want this to be removable and cork is something that will easily just peel off if we need to access the manifold, which hopefully we will not. But yeah, that's the current situation here. So I'm just going to take this stuff out and then cork that up. And if we swing around into the kitchen, this is, all well, Lydia's aprons, <laughs> this is the new shelving unit that he's just put up. As you guys know, this here is our freezer. We had this part of the kitchen actually extended out and installed to look like the existing kitchen. So we've got a vent at the bottom for the freezer and then the cupboard door, which has got a integrated freezer in it, like so. This was painted by myself. So it's probably not up to the standard that it should be. And uh, we had Christian come out and do our worktops for us. This piece of worktop used to be the center island worktop. We had this replaced quite some time ago, but the guy who removed it for us said, guys, I'm gonna keep it in my warehouse for you. Should you ever need it, just holler. And we did. So this is actually the original worktop that's now been installed and we use the splashbacks to keep the consistency throughout. And then Andy's come today and put these two shells up for us and he's very neatly installed two spotlights that are the exact same brand as the spotlights that are existing in this kitchen here. This is a Tom Howley kitchen and this section of it is not, but we've done our best to try and spoke fit a very similar style to the kitchen and of course this was fitted by none other than our man Andy T uh, quite some time ago so yeah that's the update so far I've got to connect up when the transformer arrives the lights for under there they're going to be switching on and off with all of the under unit lights which is lovely there's power up there we've already looked so that's great and yeah it's a nice little addition so I think that 
I'm guessing Lydia's gonna have this decorated the same color as the kitchen, which I think is Cornforth White by Farron and Ball. That's uh, gonna be a task that'll happen eventually. I think she just wanted to quickly stick some things in it to make it feel a little bit more finished. So a little update of what's been going on in the house. So we've had a male function. As you can see, the corks will come out the back end of the cork tube. I think that this head might have had something in it that was causing it to uh, create pressure back on itself and it's all come out the back end which is really annoying so as you can see we started to cork and then we ran out <laughs> we've just had some prints made for Linky and uh, it's just gonna make a little personal private photo album just of loads of stuff but obviously Lynx is gonna be included in that bless him it's nearly a year 14th of August we lost him and that is coming up in fact when this video goes live it's probably not gonna be far from uh, the date if not the date has passed from Lynx's disappearance so yeah very sad I miss him a lot but anyway before we lose the light tonight I am going to put up some new wires for the wisteria to grow across the front of the house. I've actually purchased the wires from Amazon and I've already had some and they work absolutely amazing. They've got retentioners on them uh, so you can keep a nice tight wire line. Uh, they look really neat so I'm just going to put some on the apex of the property uh, to try to encourage some growth across the side of the front of the house if that makes sense. If anybody's looking for some wires to encourage climbers uh, this is what I've been using. So these are the tensioners that you can see just here and then this is the wire which comes in a pack like this and then you get these that you screw into your wall, feed the wires through, clamp in the heads and then use the tensioners to create tension and then you buy these two tools here this is to cut the wire and that one's to crimp the ends on highly recommend this is a current situation starting to grow up lovely if you remember when that first went in it was probably only to about there little bush and now it's loving it so you can see the wire that goes across it's picking up on really nicely so i'm just winding the tensioner out so I can tighten it back up once the wires are in. Give myself a little bit of room to play with. So you see a little gap there, we can close that up. So if it's a little bit slack, we've got something to claw back on. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this little bit of kit here and we're gonna push that through. So if it is, I'm gonna get a pair of pliers. You can now see that that is attached. This just helps keep the wire nicely formated around the head of the tensioner. I'm going to get my wire, crimp lug. I'm going to push this through here just so it's sitting in place. And I'm going to wrap that through the hole around and then back through the lug like this keeping the wire within the grooves of that guide I'm going to be looking something a little bit like that and then get my crimp tool and then go to the largest setting and then give that a little squeeze then readjust, flip it round, and a little squeeze. And then you just give it a little check to make sure that the wires are cramped. It look like they've been clamped in nicely. So that's one end ready to go, and that will just hook onto the hook that I'm going to fit in the wall. And then once the other end is fixed to the wall, we will repeat the process, and I will then use the tensioner to tighten up to create a nice tight wire for the posterior to grow on.
the wisteria is going to tee off this way and this way. I've started to wrap it around. It's going to run up that line and then all the way along where it's terminated at the end. Just there. So as you can see, it's hardly visible. It's just a really nice way to encourage the growth of the plant to be exactly where you want it to be. So this evening's dinner, we've got jack potatoes and we're joining a special guest. <laughs> I haven't seen you since it's fucking lockdown, son. Yeah, so long. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Mine's in the middle? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I love you that you, you're like, have you got beans? Uh, no, I said, have you got beans? Or do you want me to bring beans? And you're like, have you got beans? <laughs> <laughs> we've always got beans. <sighs> What a day. You've never seen a pot of beans before? Two minute microwave jobbies. Oh, that isn't satisfying to watch. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know, so random. I just, just in case, you know how much I like to eat? Just in case I was hungry on the way home. Oh, bless you. Wow. Rates the whole garden. And then, um... That is a pathetic amount of cheese. Uh, what? what is that? <laughs> I thought you were staring at me like, he's had too much. What <laughs> is that? I almost what? defriended you then. You tell me what, what is suitable amount. You need to cover your beans. A suitable you amount. You should be able to see the beans. Come on. That's done for you. Can someone explain to me why some nights the moon looks huge and then other nights it looks so small? And I don't mean like full moon, half moon jobby. I'm on about actual physical size, like I can see the craters with my eyes from here. Oh, I'm not even filming it, I'm looking at it. So my friend Sam has just left and we spent the whole evening sitting outside in the garden and we'd left those big bipod doors wide open and the lights have been on inside. And it's been a lovely warm day today, so you can guess what has happened. Yep, that is a mixture of flies, mosquitoes, flying ants there is loads of them and they are everywhere Lydia's gonna kill me probably picked the worst mirror to talk to you in. <laughs> it's completely bowed. But anyway, I thought I'd quickly jump on here. It's currently the end of the day, it's 5 p.m. and I've finished off editing this week's vlog and I was like, oh, it's been about a week and a bit since I'd filmed the majority of this video. I'm gonna give you an update. I'm gonna go and show you how the rose is doing, how the veg truck is doing, and also the wisteria. So yeah, I thought I'd quickly jump on here and we'll finish the video up with a much more current update as to what's been happening and the progress on what we did in this video. But just before we get started, I want to show you this wisteria because when we purchase this, you'll see just here, this little twig here, it snapped off. It got trapped in the car boot, I think Lydia said. I've just seen that if you follow this green stem here, this was not here before. That has grown all the way up to there in a matter of what, a month or two? I'm so impressed, this stuff is growing like wildfire. I love it. But anyway, to talk about the job in hand, this wisteria that we did the work on, you'll see has now grown around and up and it's just chucked off a couple of new shoots and it started to grow along. It's about six inches across at the moment. So eventually that's gonna do our run that we put in the wire for so that is making great progress as well I'd say it's probably grown about 30 centimeters uh, in a week so yeah happy about that and then if we take a look at the current situation in the veg truck you'll see that we've got our spinach sprouts doing very well probably the best out of everything and we've got a lettuce got six lettuces that are growing strong carrots we have two massive rows full so you can see all the way across here and all the way across the back we've got sprouts and I believe that Lydia has now started to do new rows but I'm not sure I know she's going to and then our spring onions have sprouted now I say our Lydia has been working on this so yeah this is doing really well the rose that Lydia put in you see it's got a lovely head on it at the moment which is looking amazing 
And just before I forget, we had Veg Truck very kindly. Lydia brought this vegetable truck, but they contacted and said that they wanted to send me a solitary bee home. So this is for bumblebees that obviously pollinate a lot more efficiently than honeybees do. It's going to give them a little home uh, just underneath the veg truck, which I thought was a lovely idea. And you can have one of these in every corner and you can also have them underneath in the base of the legs as well. A couple of people had uh, suggested this actually when this was already being sent out. So I thought it was a lovely idea. I wasn't aware of it. So yeah, we've got a solitary bee home as well. I am going to get the seeds out of these sunflowers. I think you can do that. I'm guessing they're in the back, I'm not sure. We'll find out, a bit of Googling. And uh, I'm gonna seed these somewhere in the garden. And this evening, I'm gonna get busy planting some sunflowers, if that's something you can do. I'm assuming it is, because it's sunflower season. And uh, we'll see if we get some next year. So we're gonna wrap up the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.